Good morning. Uh, I am Aram Chivanyan and cryptography advisor at Zcoin. Zcoin is a privacy cryptocurrency, and I am very happy to be talking today about Lelantus, our new privacy protocol for confidential and anonymous transactions. Okay. As a brief outline of my talk, I will start from why we needed to move beyond our existing privacy technologies, and then we'll dive deeper into the Lelantus design and cryptographic details. Next, we will discuss a very interesting scheme designed by Beam, which is a hybrid of Lelantus and Mimble Mimble transactions, and, shows, and just shows the wide applicability of this, this protocol. Then I will conclude by comparing the performance of Lelantus with other privacy techniques and also identifying a few open questions and interesting research directions we are working on to further from Lelantus. So Zcoin started from the original ZeroCoin protocol, which was one of the first privacy technologies ensuring highest anonymity for transactions. It enables the users to mint coins and then redeem these coins to, without revealing their origins. When spent, the zero-knowledge proof was generated, convincing that the spent coin was one of the previously minted coins. This is cool, but zero coin absolutely lacked confidentiality of transactions. Moreover, it has other drawbacks as well. It requires some kind of trusted setup. It uh, forced to work only with fixed denominated coins. And the proof sizes were huge, just 25 kilobytes. So in 2015, a new zero coin construction has been proposed by Jens Groth and Mark Ulf Goldweiss based on the novel cryptographic constructions called one out of many proofs. Although this scheme also didn't enable confidential transaction, it's still uh, forced to use fixed denominated coins, but it was a huge step forward in this direction because it uh, eliminated the need of trusted setup and also drastically reduced the proof sizes. This zero coin construction will be the base for Lelantus, so let's see how it works. First, uh, one out of many proof. It's a zero knowledge protocol for knowledge of one out of n Peterson commitment is opening to zero without revealing its origin. Having this cryptography, it's uh, quite straightforward to build a zero coin like functionality. The user can mint new coins as a Peterson commitment. He just generates a coin serial number S and commits to it. And this coin, Peterson commitment, is published to the blockchain. When the user wants to spend it, he just has first revealed the coin serial number, and this reveal serial number will prevent the double spending attack, so the same coin cannot be spent twice. After revealing the serial number, the user just scans the set of all previously minted coins and homomorphically subtract this value from all commitments. This obviously results to a new set of commitments where one will be a commitment to zero. And the knowledge of this commitment can be proved with this one out of many proofs. This is, the, this is the design of one out of many proof constructions. I don't want to dive into its mathematical details, just wanted to show how simple is it. And you see that the proof and verification procedures just, just, just fit in this one page diagram. And Lelantus is leveraging this one out of many proof technologies to build a new protocol for anonymous and confidential transactions, which support fast page verification of transactions enables uh, to make direct anonymous payments, and as we will see, is also compatible with uh, Mimble Wimble and confidential transaction protocols, and potentially also with Ring City used in Monero. <coughs> so let's go into more details. As our first goal is to get rid of fixed denominated coins and uh, enable confidential transactions of arbitrary values, in our design, coins are represented as double-blinded commitments. We are using three independent generators, like G, H1, H2, and each coin is associated with a unique serial number witness, S, the coin value, V, and the random blinding factor, R. Next, we have to modify the original one out of n construction to support this double-blinded commitment scheme. So this new scheme is just uh, protocol of knowledge that one out of n double-blinded commitments is opening to zero. Make sense? So 
Lelanto supports two types of transaction. First one, mint transactions, enables to transfer base layer currency to shielded coins of arbitrary values and provide a proof that the sum of these output coins just uh, is equal to the minted input amount. And also, no coin contains a negative value. In order to prove this, we have also to modify the bulletproof, range proof protocol to support double blinded commitments. Next transaction, joint split, enables to merge, split, and redeem coins of arbitrary values without revealing the origins of inputs. And while enabling and while ensuring the confidentiality of both input and output coins. You see, we can make an anonymous spend with help of this one out of many proofs. But what is interesting here is this proofs, one out of many proofs, already contain all necessary information required to also generate a balance proof to show that the transaction outputs sum up with the inputs without revealing the input's origins. This is the design we are using for one out of n proofs. Again, we will not go into, met, into all details. I will be happy to discuss it after the talk, but just want to highlight that proof transcripts contains two magic values here, ZV and ZR, which are kind of encoding the coins blinding factors, V and R. So you don't reveal the secrets, but you have some encoding of that contained in the proof transcript. So let's imagine, a <coughs> I'm sorry, let's imagine a joint split transactions which uh, spends n old inputs and outputs a new, a new coins. The overall transaction transcript will contain a separate one out of improved per each, per each spent input. And it also outputs n new coins. By zooming in into the formulas of these values, we can see that ZV in cause the coin value V blinded by some random factors here, and the same is for Z, ZR. And also the proof transcript contains some auxiliary information, these values Q, which are commitments of these of this blinding factors. Having this information, it's easy to generate the balance proof. As all this uh, data is published on the blockchain, all network participants can just just compute two values, A and B, in the following way. A is the product of all output coins, which will result to a new, new let's say, double-blinded commitments, which encodes the sum of all output coins. And then users can compute value B, just committing to the sum of ZV and ZR, and also using these uh, elements, QK, to cancel the noise in these elements. This will result to formula which encodes the input of all spent, uh, spent coins in the exponent of this first time. And it's easy to notice that when the transaction balance is preserved, then computing A over B, we will have these H1 terms canceling each other. So the resulted A over B will just be represented with respect to generators G and H2. So in order to finalize the balance proof, the prover have only to generate a Schnorr generalized Schnorr proof of correct representation of this value. Next, let's see how we enable direct anonymous payments through this uh, protocol, or in other words, how the sender can create coins which can be spent only by the intended recipients. The original Lelantus design had some limited support of this functionality, which worked in the following way. Every time Alice wanted to send some coins to Bob, they engaged into Diffie-Hellman-like key exchange. So Bob published his public key, and Alice used that public key to generate a common shared secret here, which was used, which was hashed, to generate the coin serial number witness S. And then when Bob wants to spend the coin, he just revealed this, uh, this public key and used it to generate the coin serial number. And it also used the public key witness as the spending key. As Alice didn't know the witness, she couldn't spend the coin. This is good, but the bad thing was that Alice knows this, 
this public key, this, this generated public key, so he can trace the network for known serial numbers and he, she can detect when the coin was spent. We want a scheme which, uh, where only the recipient, Bob, will be able to, to, to recover this coin serial numbers. So with Sarang Noter from Monero Research Lab, we came to an efficient protocol enabling untraceable direct anonymous payments, which is still quite an intuitive design. <coughs> In order, instead of engaging into a regular Tiffy-Hellman key exchange process, Bob sends a new type of public key, we call it blinded public key, of the following form. It's, a, it's of the form of G to the X, blinded by extra factor. Alice can use this public key to create, to mint the new coin by just generating a randomness Y and committing to the coin value with respect to these generators. Of course, Alice has also to provide a range proof, convincing that this coin doesn't contain a negative value, which can be done through standard range proof, bulletproof, bulletproof protocol. You see that C is a regular Pedersen commitment with respect to generators Q and H2, but it's also a double-blinded commitment with respect to three generators, G, H1, and H2. The good thing is, in this scenario, Alice never learned any information about the G to the power XY. So Bob, the recipient, will be the only person knowing this, knowing this secret. So Bob will be the only person who can spend it without being traced. <clears throat> this change requires some modification into the original balance proof generation process, but it's still quite straightforward. Uh, we see each output coin now will be associated with the, with the generators, with the public EQ. So computing the value A, which is the product of all output coins, now will be represented with respect to this, uh, these separate generators. And intuitively, in order to fin finalize the balance proof, the prover has to show the representation of A over B with respect to this gen these generators <coughs> corresponding to output coins. Next, let's see how we enable fast batch verification of transactions of one out of many proofs. The verification of these proofs are linear of size n. They boil down to big multi-exponentation of this form where the generators, as you can see, each, for each transaction, the generators are transaction specific. Because the users, for each, for each spended coin, the user just scans the anonymity set, like uh, the set of all previously minted coins, and for each spent coin, he has to subtract the coin serial number from the corresponding commitments, which result to transaction-specific generators here. But uh, the good thing is in our design, these serial numbers are revealed during the spent transactions. So we can incorporate them into the verification equation and get to an equivalent equation where the generators in the big multi-exponentation are transaction agnostic. This will help to batch verification of many transactions together. With, with, the, with the well known techniques of batch verification and simple math uh, modifications, we will get to this formula which enables to verify uh, like a bunch of different transactions by still using one big multi-exponentation of size n. This will help to save n exponentation per each, per each new spend. And uh, based on our benchmarks, the average cost for each verification can be as low as 13 milliseconds for anonymity sets of size 16,000, and it can be as low as 35 milliseconds for for bigger size of 65,000. Uh, 
Uh, last thing I want to discuss is the hybrid scheme of Lilantus and Mimble Wimble. Two privacy projects, Green and Beam, are using the privacy protocol called Mimble Wimble, which is a very interesting uh, protocol uh, enabling confidential transactions and resulting to very compact blockchains. But it has a privacy issue where the transactions are uh, actually, it doesn't break the linkability of transactions. And Beam came to design of uh, modifying Lelantus to fit into Mimble Wimble and enabling anonymous transactions. Uh, I will just, let me just give high level overview how it works, although more detailed talk on this has been made by PIMS cryptographers in ZK Pro workshop yesterday, so you can, you can find the video. So Mimble Wimble is a interactive protocol between the sender and the recipient enabling to make confidential transactions. Each transaction is comprised of the input coins and output coins, which are represented through regular patterns and commitments. And it also contains some auxiliary data referred as transaction kernels, uh, which Schnorr proves, which show that the transaction is balanced, meaning the transaction fee plus the sum of output coins is equal to the spent inputs. The first uh, important design fact of this hybrid scam is, uh, is the fact that we can combine regular Pedersen commitments and this shielded the double blinded commitments into a mixed confidential transaction and still provide a generalization or proof that the transaction is balanced. The idea is yeah, you can spend regular Pedersen coins but output double blinded shielded coins. While, it, while still proving that the sum of output is equal to the sum of the inputs. This results to a, a new shielded, coin, shielded pool on top of a UTXO set, and the user is able to spend coins anonymously from the shielded, shielded pool. For doing that, it just, it just worked in the following way. The user, again, reveals the coin serial number, which is GS, and then instead of providing a one out of n proofs for double blinded commitment just to show that the one of the coin will be commitment to zero, it also outputs a new Peterson commitment, a new coin, which encodes the same value but with another randomness. Next, the user can again scan the shielded pool and homomorphically subtract the product of the coin serial number and this new commitment from all, all minted coins. Obviously, one of the resulted commitments will be an opening to zero, which knowledge can be proved with standard one out of many proofs. This helps the user to just extract the regular Peterson commitment, regular coin from the shielded pool. And this extracted commitment already can participate into mixed Mimble Wimble transactions. Which uh, and the, the outputs of which can again be shielded coins and can be added to the, to the shielded pool. And the same ideas can be used to combine Lelantus with confidential transaction design, not with Mimble Wimble. So, let me conclude by showing the performance, like uh, comparing how Lelantus uh, performance uh, compares with other privacy technologies. You can see that the uh, proof sizes and the uh, performance is compatible with Monero, although we are able to support uh, much larger anonymity sets, which will uh, make the scheme resistant against uh, um, flooding or transaction graph analysis attacks. Uh, not surprised that it's uh, hard to beat zero cache performance, which comes with uh, minimum proof sizes and um, blazingly fast verification. But unlike zero cache, we don't require any trusted setup. We are using only standard cryptographic assumptions. And uh, what is more important, we are not employing any complex arithmetic circuits. So this is a design which is easy to, easy to implement, easy to, easy to test, easy to do crypto analysis. And uh, we believe that there are uh, many ways that Lelantus can be yet significantly improved. An interesting open problem here remains uh, to support stealth addresses in the direct anonymous payment system. 
it will be very interesting to design uh, efficient M out of N proofs, a new cryptographic protocols which will help to prove that M, let's say M out of N commitment is opening to zero and this will result to significant uh, proof size optimization for transactions having more than one input. And we are now working to support multi-asset transfers and also enable auditability of uh, transactions for enterprise use cases. So as we have still have plenty of time, we'll be happy to answer questions. Thank you for your attention. I just wanted to know how different is this from Grin and Beam because they also use Mimblewimble, I believe. Yes, they are using Mimblewimble. Yeah. And uh, as we discussed, uh, Mimblewimble is a totally different protocol. Okay. Which, which doesn't, which comes with some privacy drawbacks. For example, it doesn't really break the linkability of transactions. So we just discussed how this can be combined with Mimblewimble. Okay. So to solve that problem. Okay. All right. Okay, no questions. Thanks so much.